one and now shall my Welcome, everyone. Uh, we especially welcome Bloor Street, who are worshiping with us today, and of course, Alan and his family, you just heard. And know this, uh, no matter what you believe, no matter what you do not believe, no matter what you have done, no matter what you have left undone, no matter who you are, and no matter who you love, you are welcome to this service. Why? Because it's not just the Church of the United Church of Canada, nor is it only the Church of Trinity St. Paul's Center for Faith, Justice and the Arts. This is in fact the Church of Christ and in Christ Church, everyone is welcome. A couple of notes before we start, please keep yourself on mute until uh, and if you want uh, to pray during our prayers of the people. And uh, of course, um, uh, during passing the peace. Uh, so there's that as well. We can make a joyful noise today. Why not? Um, also, we have coffee hour right after the service. So please join us. And today is Holy Communion. Look, we're celebrating with the gang. Um, so make sure at some point between now and then that you get something. It could be bread. It could be in my case, it's going to be a corn tortilla. Uh, it could be wine. It Before breakfast is fine. Uh, it could be uh, the cold coffee, it could be juice, whatever you've got. In my case, it's a glass of pomegranate juice. Um, so whatever you need or have uh, to celebrate with us, please just make sure that that's handy when the time comes. Just a few uh, words too about the author of our opening hymn, Sylvia Dunstan. Many of you who are younger and perhaps don't have the history with the United Church don't know about Sylvia. Uh, Sylvia was this phenomenal person, very out, very queer. Uh, she always wore a collar. She was one of my inspirations for wearing a collar as often as possible. She wrote the lyrics to this and many of our hymns, uh, incredibly beautiful lyrics. I would say one of the best hymn lyricists of, uh, of our time. Uh, she was born in 19... Um, at 55, she was ordained by the United Church of Canada in 1980 and sadly died in 1993 at only the age of 38. She did in her tenure uh, prison chaplaincy, church chaplaincy. Uh, she wrote, uh, obviously, and in 1990, she was honored with the Hymn Society right across North America as being uh, their lead. So um, uh, we're going to hear Sylvia's hymn, we're going to sing at home on mute, and we're going to thank all things Sylvia. Scattered 
In communion's love has stood, taste and see the grace eternal, taste and see that God is good. All who hunger sing together, Jesus Christ is living bread. Come from loneliness and longing, hearing peace, we have been led. Blessed are those who from this table live their lives in gratitude. Taste and see the grace eternal, taste and see that God is good. Welcomed and supported by our gathered community, we turn our hearts and our minds to God, the giver and sustainer of life. With gratitude and commitment, we respond to the creator with praise and with prayer. Let us pray. Creator Spirit, we come to praise you for the blessings we receive to listen to your call through the wisdom of companions past and present and to commit ourselves afresh to the healing of the world. Be present with us in this time of quiet. Amen. This is the light of Christ. This is the light of our world. Just a couple of announcements. Again, a reminder today is Holy Communion, the Eucharist, Christ's Supper, uh, and we're invited to partake in that in whatever we have handy at home. So that's coming up. Just uh, if you don't have something handy, you have a chance to get it between now and then. Um, also, um, for those uh, in TSP, uh, we are coming back. You've asked and asked and asked in person, September 12th. We will be back in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. So do uh, come and celebrate with us. Um, it truly will be a celebration. And of course, again, welcome to our friends, brothers, sisters, and others at, at Bloor Street. Um, also, I just want to give a shout out to the women at the Olympics. Way to go, Canada. Hey, and for those of you who are watching, and maybe this will lead to equal funding for women in sports. You never know. There's always that. Um, are there any other announcements um, that maybe I've missed? If so, just unmute yourself. I'll give you a second. Oh, wonderful. The next thing we always do at Trinity St. Paul's is to acknowledge that we are on sacred ground, on traditional territory here. And I want to, first of all, share some good news, and it's rare these days, but some wonderful news about Grassy Narrows. They have got some money from the government. Hopefully we'll get clean water soon. Also, um, some lawsuits have been settled uh, in, far away as Manitoba in terms of clean drinking water for First Nations. So that's happening. And for those of you who do not know, 1492 Land Back Plain won their fight against developers on native territory, they won. So thank you for all your prayers and action around that. Let's listen. As we assemble in this holy place, we recognize that for thousands of years, this territory has been a sacred gathering place for many peoples of Turtle Island. We respectfully acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of several indigenous nations and wish to pay special recognition to the Mississaugas of the credit. The original nations continue to cry out for justice. And together we say, as treaty people, we commit to listen, learn, and work to right the wrongs of the past and present. So now it comes time to take part in that ancient Christian ritual, it shows that we do not walk the spiritual path alone. We do it together in holy community. So we're gonna share the peace of Christ with each other. We can do it this way. 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 And if we're lucky enough to live with somebody we love and they're close, we can actually hug them and kiss them. We can do all of the above. Uh, and uh, we're gonna start to do that now with me leading off by saying, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. And also with you. you. Also with you. Peace. 
Peace. Peace. Peace of Christ be with you. Alan, thank you for your beautiful music, Alan and family. Peace be with you. Peace, Peace Trudy. Allison on the phone. Peace, Mary Simpson. Peace, Anne. Peace, Trudy. Peace, Randy. Peace, Manka. Peace, Robin. Peace to Robin in Alberta. Bridget. Peace, Peace, Allison. Peace, Mary. Nice to see you, Robin. Peace, William. Yeah. Peace, Bridget. Delma. I Peace, hear it's Spur Street. Who I have some no miss. And Peace, Mary Katsuna. Hello, Anne Hogg. Peace, Bridget. Peace, Mary Louise and Bill. Peace, Louise. Peace, Peter, Louise and Bill. Peace, Randy. Peace, Peace, Robert. Peace, Mary and Ellen. Peter Lewis. William. Peace, Nathan, Robert. Robert. Peace, Garnet. Peace, Mary. Peace, 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 Good morning. On this 10th Sunday after Pentecost, the first reading is from Exodus 16, 2 to 4, 9 to 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses. I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew all around. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as the frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? Moses said, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. For the psalm this morning, I chose something uh, really unusual. It's about the young boy who ran away from the residential school in the 60s and who was known as Charlie Winjack then. The words and music of this song are by Willie Dunn. I think of it as a psalm of lament and of encouragement to those in distress. And I sing it in memory of Willie Dunn who was born in 19, 
1941 and died in 2013. I've been singing this song for about 20 years and for the past eight years as an August weekend memorial to the songwriter who died in early August, 2013. The second reading is from John 6, 
24 to 35. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor, her, nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread, but it is my father who gives you the true bread. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Thanks be to God. Yes, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Thomas and others for, uh, of course, it's Emancipation Day, and we should rejoice in that. What is it? <laughs> to quote the Israelites, Emancipation Day in 1834 was when in the British Empire, slavery was abolished, or at least the outward form of it. And that meant some 800,000 African Canadians were set free for those who think we didn't have slavery. So we should rejoice indeed. Happy Emancipation Day, everyone. Let us pray together. Dearest God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Also, yes, our bread and our drink. In Christ's name, amen. Uh, well, uh, friends, it's so nice to see you all back, even in your little squares on a screen. But what a year or two it's been, uh, the plague year, except it's been more than a year, right? Millions have lost their lives to COVID. Many of our own have had COVID. We've been in lockdown, house arrest, watching sadly as small business flounders and folk have been laid off, while other essential workers have risked their lives performing the very simple acts of selling us food or caring for our plagued bodies. Like the Israelites who escaped slavery in Egypt, it seems those of us lucky enough to have survived and gathered here, we can't wait for the good news. We have this summer, we've burst from our homes into our city to friends and family's homes for the first time. We're almost there, but not quite. It's the not quite yet that has the Israelites grumble too. We escape slavery only to starve. We have in our way said, 
not fast enough, not open enough, not normal enough. There's urgency to our aspirations, our hopes. We want what we want and we want it now. I invite you this morning to pause, to let spirit in a little, to breathe, yes. <sighs> to listen and just to wait a little. The silver lining of the COVID cloud was that we were forced to slow down. We were unable to do and we had to be a little bit more. No longer were we able, those of us with privilege to pick up and travel. No longer were many without privilege able to work. Many were forced into poverty. Poverty again, like the Israelites who were impoverished. How is one able to hurry toward the promised land if you're weakened from hunger? COVID made other aspects of life clear too. We learned if we didn't already know that the militarized power of the state was there to serve some and not others, to protect some and not protect others. The images recently of the forced removal of encampments were a graphic example that showed everyone that those who have nothing are not considered citizens. As the mayor spoke of parks for children and others, he didn't mean the children in those tents. He didn't mean the folk whose only other real choice was a dangerous shelter. Most would much rather live in a tent in a park than in a shelter where disease is and was rampant, not to mention theft and very often violence. And know this, less than 9% of those who were removed from encampments have been housed. Black Lives Matter, as did Idle No More, made clear that the state wasn't their friend either. And if any doubt was left about who deserves serving and protecting, the discovery of hundreds of unmarked graves, just a small portion of the thousands of indigenous children that died by let's call it what it was, genocide, should move any question. If you are white, if you have money, if you have well-paid work. Perhaps it's your state. If you aren't, it isn't. This also is nothing new, yet COVID exposed it clearly. If you had to travel to work on a crowded bus without adequate protection to a job in long-term care or a factory or a supermarket, if you were elderly in some long-term care or racialized or on ODSP or OW, you got sicker and you died more often. These are the ugly facts. They were made patently clear. Also made clear was the suicidal nature of our state, where our federal government and our provincial government put billions into subsidizing fossil fuels and pennies by comparison into providing clean water in First Nations communities where our world is in many cases like British Columbia on fire. And yet little mention in media is made of a climate crisis or a climate emergency. And the generation of wealth is all that is really supported. Where billionaires are being sent to space in projectiles for 10 minutes, replicating by the way, what monkeys accomplished decades ago, is more important news than the mass starvation, floods, fires, and decimation of life. Not to mention that clutching onto patents over the dissemination of life-saving vaccines to countries that desperately need them show yet again greed over life. Banting, best, and salt are rolling over in their graves at such greed. COVID showed all of this reality starkly. If you don't or you didn't see it, you weren't looking. The Israelites looked to and were confronted with slavery and or starvation. Such a future is pretty horrific. There was no ignoring it for them either. Their grumbling was absolutely on point. Even as the answer stared them in the face, this white substance that appeared, they didn't immediately eat it. They said instead, manna, or in Hebrew meaning, what is it? Notice how the grumbling disciples, no matter how many miracles Jesus does, are never convinced. 
They want even more bread from Jesus and compare Jesus unfavorably with Moses. Moses provided food and you haven't, which of course was not true. Jesus had already fed the 5,000 and John, not to mention walking on water. I mean, really, some people, what does it take? No mind, Jesus answers the Israelite question as a good rabbi would. Jesus performs exegesis on the founding story of Israelites or what Jews would call good midrash. Jesus simply says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Jesus as food and drink. As we celebrate Holy Communion or the Eucharist or Christ's Supper, we're enacting the statement from John. We're doing it as we have throughout the plague with whatever's handy, grape juice or cold coffee, water or wine or pomegranate juice, a little too early, toast or a bagel, or today a corn tortilla for me. It's our version of, hey, what is it? What do I find here of the Israelites? And also our version of how Jesus appears to us in the ordinary food of everyday life, sustenance and celebration. It's what we celebrate, isn't it? The very ordinary, extraordinary miracle of that which has kept us all going through these long months. Jesus is in the what is it of our lives. Also, though, the other critical element in holy reality is in the sharing. It isn't holy unless it is shared. It isn't holy unless it is shared equally. It isn't holy unless all are welcome. When these elements are present, we are fully fed. Like the 5,000, like the Israelites with a mouthful of something. What is it? And a sip of liquid, what is that? And we're fully fed. What makes such a meager meal majestic? A bunch of white dew and some birds, some loaves and fishes, a sip of wine, a tiny piece of bread, or whatever we have handy. Not only that it's shared and welcoming, welcoming, but that it's in the eating and drinking that we remember our ancestors who for thousands of years have paused, taken time out, not hurried on to the next and hopefully better chapter, but in the midst of uncertainty and often fear, recognize the sacredness of this moment when we had something, anything to eat and to drink and when we were and are together. Fires may be raging, folk may be sick, oppression is definitely real, but there's this moment. There was that moment when, do you remember we say, when we came or come together without much, but we knew it was enough. And of course, it's not only that communion is shared, welcoming and remembering, but also prayed. Jesus is in the food when the food is prayed over and prayer is never a solo act. It is a conversation between the source of all love, the spirit, the creator, and the created, the creature. We ask blessing upon the cold coffee, the leftover juice, the wine, the corn tortilla, the bread, the fish, the dew, the birds, and the blessing is always given. I repeat, the blessing is always given. Before our eyes, the simplest of items become Christ-like we are allowed again to see them as they truly are, holy. An interviewer that was supposed to be an interview on my new book threw in a kind of folksy personal question. I think this was on CBC um, and asked me what I was first looking forward to as the city began to open up. I said immediately, because it had been so long that I or anyone had been able to do it. I said, I looked forward to having a crisp, cold glass of white wine on an outdoor restaurant patio on a lovely afternoon. So my daughter and I did just that at our neighborhood hangout as soon as we could and they could legally open. They did and we were there and ordered a glass of white wine each. Of course, first we had to mask, 
fill out a COVID form, provide all sorts of personal details, which was just being safe, of course. No issues, but immediately a bit different, a bit strange. Then when the wine came, we did our own version of what is this? Because let's face it, for the price per glass, we could have had really good wine, much better wine at home. We also realized that after all the rigmarole to get in, the patio was noisy and hot and too close to traffic. We ordered food and it was mediocre too, which was when we realized we'd become pretty good cooks during COVID with no restaurants to go to, we'd learn to be more inventive. And let's face it, cooking at home is way cheaper. Bottom line, my post-COVID food and drink fantasy was not all that. Grumbling, we were in true biblical tradition. You got us through the pandemic so we could have second-rate wine on a noisy, hot patio after giving them all our personal details. Gee, thanks. Don't get me wrong. It's wonderful to go out and eat and drink with friends, but it's actually truth to tell, wonderful to eat and drink with friends anywhere, even on Zoom. Holy Communion demands of us that we see the holiness in just our simple acts. And there's still more. Not only is the sacredness in the sharing, the welcoming, the remembering, the friends and family and the praying, it's in the deeply radical act of doing so, not just with friends, but with anyone, even with those who wish you harm. The Israelites hated Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in Egypt, but ate our fill of bread, for you brought us out into the wilderness to kill us all with hunger. The disciples all ended up abandoning Jesus in life, yet knowing what Ju Judas was about to do, Judas behind me with us, clutching that bag of silver, Jesus included Judas in the Last Supper. Not only is it necessary to include all in a meal to make it holy, one must include even one's enemies, those that do not wish one well. Don't worry too much at larger family gatherings as we return to them. Undoubtedly, there will be among the guests those that do not wish you all that well. The bigger the crowds we return to, the more likely an enemy will be included. If you have no enemies in life, Jesus' question to us would be, you just don't think you do, or what have you not done? Or if the state serves and protects you, what have you done to question that? Advocate for the marginalized, stood with those that need serving and protecting? That will, as it did with Jesus, guarantee you enemies. Remember, aside from a few, Jesus had nothing but enemies at Gethsemane. Forgive them, they know not what they do. At the Christian Left Conference, a joint project of Emmanuel Toronto Mennonite Institute for Christian Studies, uh, the Center for Religion, Philosophy and Ethics, and Trinity St. Paul's that we held uh, July 23rd and 24th. By the way, the best yet with 256 registered from South Africa to the Philippines, Christian peacemakers in their panel contrasted the difference between their approach and some others as seeing the occupation forces in the West Bank as mistaken rather than as enemies. Although it was interesting, another American presenter, also Christian, who had worked with Christian peacemakers problematized that. And even the practice of nonviolence when he quoted a Palestinian who said, have we not the right to defend ourselves? How we interpret the call of Christ in terms of those who do not wish us well, mistaken or enemies, the call to Christ's feast is unmistakable. Come and get it, one and all. As we emerge from the plague with all its biblical overtones into a profoundly uncertain future, we are all called to pause, to pray, to share, to remember, and to understand. It can only be called Christ, this moment of ours, if truly all are welcome. After all, as COVID also showed, the greatest of our enemies can sometimes be ourselves. And also remember the feast we share today, shared for thousands of years with enemies, prayed over and holy in and of itself, 
mindful of our ancestors, is food for the journey to the promised land. That's the direction, nothing less, and comes with the promise that we will arrive. So the Eucharist, Holy Communion, and Christ's Supper is a rehearsal for that day when none will hunger and all will be well. That day, that day is promised. Pause, be, be thankful and relish the sacred moment. So be it. As we share in this community of Trinity, St. Paul's United Church, we are invited to share in its work and also in its witness. We take a quiet moment to reflect with gratitude on the blessings we have received and on the gifts we can and do offer in response. Generous creator, receive the gifts we give for the life and ministry of your church. Accept them as a thanksgiving for the blessings we receive. Let us take a moment of quiet reflection. Amen. Please do uh, follow along with communion liturgy, but keep yourselves on mute. The resurrection is among us. Hallelujah. We gather at the table of life. We are all welcome. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Gracious creator, we raise voices hoarse from singing alleluias. We sing songs of praise for this beautiful world. As people of faith, we remember Miriam and Moses leading their people to freedom, Sarah and Abraham, immigrants seeking a new life, Mary and Peter witnessing the empty tomb. We remember all the saints of our holy community, some only known to us. We will never forget. We remember that special one, Jesus, child of Mary, the Jesus who overturned all tables, the Jesus who stood vulnerable and powerful, yet against all forces of oppression. The Jesus put to death and yet alive in justice, truth, and love. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so it was Jesus gathered friends together, took the sustenance we all need, ordinary bread, gave thanks and said, this is my body broken for you. Jesus then took wine the joy and thanksgiving we all need, and said, whenever you drink of this, know the new covenant is as essential as our blood. This is the banquet of freedom. I'd invite you now to take your elements and so that we might all partake together, the bread of heaven, Amen. The cup of thanksgiving. Amen. Let us together say the words that we were taught. Our creator, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mad the sound is bad. Good, good morning, everyone. Um, these, are, these are the prayers of the people. Dear God, thank you for this blessed day. Thank you for the rain and the heat that nourishes all living things. Thank you for all those sweet products of the earth, for the onions and tomatoes coming freshly from farms and gardens. Thank you for the fields beginning to ripen for the food that will sustain us when the seasons change. Thank you for all those hands that bring us our food, those farmers and farm workers, truckers, grocery clerks, cooks and couriers. Thank you to all of those who feed and sustain us. May we take care of them as they could take care of us. Thank you for the home that I slept in last night. Thank you for the walls and the roof and the air conditioning units. Thank you for everything that lets me pass through my days in peace and comfort. I feel grateful that I get to pass my nights in a comfortable home on a soft bed. I feel grateful for the strength and clarity that gives me to approach each day. I feel humbled to know how many of my neighbors lack these necessities. Thank you for the opportunities that life presents to live out your ministry by seeking housing for the houseless and comfort for the weary. Thank you for the joy we find in connection and in the increasing opportunities to connect with loved ones these days. May we do so safe, safely and thoughtfully so that we may do so joyfully. Thank you for the changes that have been brought on by a reduction in active cases of COVID. Thank you for the healing that, ha that has been found so far. Extend your reach to every body facing sickness and let them find health. 
Let us learn from the mistakes of these times and transform these mistakes into gifts of learning for the future. Thank you for all of these joys, great and small, and let them inspire us to share more of your love through our words and actions. Let us now take a moment to reflect on the things we have been given and how those gifts might be shared more fully in the world. your great spirit of love and justice. We pray to you today for wisdom and strength to respond to a warming world. The fires and floods that we have seen in the past weeks are vivid reminders of the dangers of climate change. These visions remind us that the change and hardship that we face ahead of us and the terrible consequences for our inactivity, past and present. So much of the beautiful diversity of life on your world is at risk of annihilation if we do not mend our ways. We ask, may we remain in touch um, with all of the wor world around us. May we not be crushed by the visions of the future. Instead, may the extremity of the situation inspire the intensity of our response. Help us grow to the heights needed to address these challenges. As we consider the challenges of a changing climate, place always at the front of our minds the necessity of a new relationship between settlers and indigenous peoples. Let us hear the wisdom of those land and water defenders who, are protecting, who have been protecting this land for many centuries. Let us make the first, our first work as believers the ending of the colonial relationships of dominance and control that undergird this country. Let us instead embrace the necessity of honesty and reciprocity, which allows us to live in harmony. Let us stand with people across this land as they insist on the sanctity of life and the necessity of justice. And let our solidarity extend not just to the colonized people of this land, but all of those who face the violent dispossession of their homes. Let us pray for the 7 million Palestinians who are currently refugees, internally or externally displaced. Let us remember their struggles, even as it no longer grabs headlines. Let us remember that the devastation of bombings and demolitions continues long after the dramatic footage of airstrikes and protests passes away. We pray that justice and peace would land on all peoples and that we might be instruments of that peace and that justice. Let us now take a moment of silence to listen for the voice of God. Dear great spirit of love and justice, bring down the blessing of wisdom and joy upon all, all of us and those around us, that we may be open to the heavenly contented peace that is possible for us at all times. May we seek the cultivation of peace and camaraderie between all people. When those near us, family, friends, coworkers, test our patience and our kindness, open our hearts to your great and abiding spring of love that we might always answer cruelty with kindness and mortal smallness with eternal greatness. Give us the strength, patience, and intention to be servants of love in a world who insists on us being servants of power. Let us act as emissaries of your love. Let us consider those in our lives who may need extra comfort these days and let us make it so. Let us recall those who are for their own health or the health of others still remaining inside and away. Let us ease the burden of their loneliness as best as we can. Let us think of those who so often get forgotten and seek always new ways to show the love that is your true nature. Let us now take a moment to reflect on where God is calling us to bring their love 
to the close relationships around us. Dear great spirit of love and justice, we pray now especially for these children of yours um, as they endure the challenges of the day. Gian Rolls, Dominic, Domenico DeLeo and family grieving the death of her mother, Anna DeLeo. Dominica and Alessandra who are struggling with recurring illnesses. Lee Potts, Dan Beckett, Lurleen Clark, Katie Osborne and the Osborne Argue families, Andreas Prince, Lynn Gates, Zaire M. Said, Mary Marshall, Emma Wakelin, Judy Bonner, Chris Bentley, Benoit Buteau, Sarah Bradshaw, Marta Reyes Suspendo, Christina Capson, Don Matheson, Sita Ramanandjan, family and friends of John Spears, Martha Turkul, Marion Wall, Lorna and Tom Wakelin. We, offer, we now offer the ecumenical prayer. Today we pray with the Church of the Republic of Congo, Gabon, and Sao Tome and Vincent. Lord, if you want that we should love you with all our heart, without distraction or detour, teach us to become constant in your love. When those without faith or law insult us, help us forgive, O resurrected one. Jesus, the friend of the people of the Congo, your father is not a God of the dead, but of the living. Therefore, guide us in your love so that we may live in your presence forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
So again, just a reminder, after the postlude to stay with us for coffee hour, we'd love to get to know you all better. Um, I wanna thank everyone who is involved in today's service, uh, Thomas and Warren and Alan and family and Charlotte. Uh, and of course, behind the scenes, James and Pradeep. It's always a challenge, right? It's always a challenge on Zoom. So thank you. And Gordon too. Um, so thanks all who made this possible. Uh, and know and remember this sacred moment that we shared together when we shared the what is it out of our cab, you know, cupboards and refrigerators um, and turned it into something holy, the sacredness that we can hold up and over and against a world that, of course, needs us. So know this, you are sacred, you are essential, you are beloved, and only you can make this world into the promised land together, of course. So do this and all will be well. And you will go knowing that God is the source of all love, Jesus Christ who is love incarnate and the Holy Spirit loves power is with you now and with you always. We are holding you in our hearts. We are keeping you in our sight. We are drawing you ever nearer. We are holding you in the light. Holding, holding, we are holding in the light. thinking of you with love we are thinking of you with love we are thinking of you with gladness we are holding you in the light holding holding we are holding in the light Oh. 